Hey there, and welcome to my settlement tour. Today, we'll be undertaking the castle, the Minutemen headquarters. This is one of my playthroughs that I've got. Uh, I'll give you a brief synopsis. Um, so I've just completed this playthrough all the way to the end with the Minutemen and the Brotherhood and the Railroad still alive and friendly, or I suppose in technical speak, Frictional, but still alive. Um, I mean, we're allies and, and whatnot, and we're not hostile towards each other, so I suppose that's all that matters. Um, this playthrough was basically designed to be the be-all and end-all good ending, I suppose, with the people of the Commonwealth forming a government and the Brotherhood being there to assist them as an alliance and basically just being a coalition government made of the three factions that aren't the Institute. Um, but uh, this is a modded playthrough, so any mods I will leave in the description if you fancy on looking at those. Um, and I will also leave a personal link to my Google Doc for this particular playthrough. Um, I do have a, a second playthrough, which is the stark opposite. Um, the second playthrough is essentially a raider playthrough, um, using the railroad to destroy all the other factions and then betraying them so that no one else can threaten the Nuke World Raiders. Um, but... Uh, Generally speaking, I just kind of wanted to show off this settlement as a, a kind of view to give you a little window or an outlet into my kind of viewing of when I'm playing this game or when I'm designing things. So without further ado, I suppose we better get into it. I'll make my way post haste to the castle. So you'll notice that we have a couple of robots dotting around outside. Um, this is largely just provisioners. I wanted to do human ones, but I originally felt like if we're having human provisioners, they have to go through like some of the most dangerous places in the Commonwealth. So I'm torn. Uh, I'm really quite torn between doing the... Uh, human provisioners or the robot provisioners but uh, but enough about that uh, you'll notice that on the top of the star points I have not only turrets but I have sandbags and guards patrolling um, we have barbed wire along the along the top uh, basically just to stop anyone from climbing it more or less. We have guard posts there, we have a, a Minuteman in power armour, uh, standing vigil outside. You'll notice that on every single point there's sandbags just to protect the people that are up there. Um, we'll enter through the main gate now. Uh, as we enter through the main gate, the first thing you'll begin to notice is the radio shack. Um, I felt like the little round shackle shack that was given to the comms officer was not really sufficient or up to scratch. I I didn't really want to change the silhouette too much of the actual castle itself, so I kind of kept all the uh, function. Uh, I kind of kept all of the functionality kind of stuff in all the star points. So next to this we have the shooting range for our Minutemen to train. Uh, I'll, have you, I'll give you a little brief look at the inside of the radio tower. He's uh, got his own little power system with it. Um, what I might do is go along the top first and show you that and then we'll go in the insides. So as we go up the stairs, you'll notice that there's a hell of a lot of Minutemen in here. I think I have about 30 Minutemen in the castle. Um, but on each point of the star, uh, you'll have sandbags protecting the artillery gunners, but we also have artillery on every single point, which makes this a full 360 view coverage for artillery. And we have, uh, we have pillboxes on every center point so we have people patrolling and guarding so this place is 
virtually impossible to conquer. Um, the Institute tried and they failed. Uh, but uh, there's not too much more to say about the top. I mean, it's pretty constant all the way around. There is no real changes to the top here. So I'll head back down. Um, and I will show off the farming area. So I decided that uh, because this is the headquarters, we need a logistics division and supplies for our soldiers. Now, I wanted to sort of make this feel like the Minuteman aesthetic. So on the outside, I did uh, wooden walls and I... I've made it so that they're protected, but we have a supply division here that farms and collects stuff that our provisioner sends out to our military outposts, making it kind of feel more authentic and realistic. I will head back in and I will head into the armory. So in the armory, we have three quartermasters. We have a weapons quartermaster here who has a little box um, with weapons on the wall. Um, loads of different uh, weapons all over just to give you a general feel we have uh, Ronnie Shaw here who is the head of our logistics division so she is basically head quartermaster um, and third in command of the Minutemen uh, here is our armorer quartermaster so you'll see that there's plenty of power armor that I've salvaged for uh, the Minutemen including my own personal power armor suit with uh, legendary items and the Brotherhood Sentinel marker on it because, you know, I am the Sentinel of the Brotherhood and I deserve to be recognised about that, even when I'm representing a different faction. So, you know, I felt like that was kind of par for the course, really. Um, so I'm going to head back out. Uh, and then we're going to head over to the mess area. Um, so the mess area, well... First of all, throughout all of the walls here, we have loads of different cots and beds for our Minutemen to use. Here we arrive at our mess hall, and I tried to make it feel like an authentic diner slash um, mess hall to feed and you know rationale our, our soldiers, and he's one of our officers, um, does a very good job. As far as I'm concerned, people constantly come in here and grab some food and grab some drink and whatnot. Um, not really too much more to say about that, rather than it just being a rest area and keeping our men fed and uh, watered, I suppose. Um, so yeah, you'll see that we have bunk beds all the way throughout this. Um, we're now approaching our officer's quarter, uh, where we've got Preston who is a colonel in this, um, who's also the Minutemen's second in command, basically, uh, with me being the general. Um, we, uh, I've got a uh, faction housing overhaul installed, so I didn't have to have my own built area. I've got my own quarters downstairs. I won't show that off in this video because that's pretty self-standard and it's, it's all designed by the wonderful Eleonora. Um, but if you feel free to to want to, well, if, if you want to see what that looks like, then you'll have to look at the mod page, I suppose. Um, so I don't plan on going through multiple load screens for that. Um, yeah, so as we continue down, we have a little supply area here. We have bunk beds here. And we're approaching the medical area. So we have our little chem station for um, our medical officer to create different medicines and adrenals and whatever else he has his supplies behind him he acts more like a vendor than a normal medic other than um this area over here which we which we have here is our trauma station basically for any minimum and they get injured but that's very rare to be honest and we have wheelchairs over here for those who find themselves unable to walk or struggle with uh the ability to walk after a active duty we have more bunk beds over here and then we come to the main residential area so I've decorated this to make the Minutemen feel at home when they're not at duty so they've got uh, bunk beds 
They've got plenty of beds to sleep on. They've got personal supply lockers, and then they've got a little rest area here for, for those who want to rest their achy bones. Uh, and then we're coming up to the generator area. So this fusion generator over here generates 100 power. Now I figured with this being our main power center, uh, it'd probably be wise to block it off and lock it so that no one can uh, sabotage our efforts here, I suppose. Um, but as we come up the stairs here, we'll be heading back up to the top. And that is virtually the entire footprint of my new castle. I mean, I've I've undertaken a few mods that help me fix up the castle and make it fit the style that they intended and the style that the real Fort Independence continues on without changing too much of the external. Um, only really change. Uh, the only real changes to it are just the fences and the barricades and whatnot. But uh, but as we approach night, we'll uh, we'll see the lovely Pridwin airship in the background with the Boston Airport, which I have another settlement at. And uh, if anyone would like to to see that, please let me know. I will probably do some more uh, videos in the future, but uh, for now, I just wanted to test the water with this. But as I said in in the beginning, I don't plan on monetizing these. These are basically just for me and anyone else that wants to see them, that wants an interest in in what I'm doing or wants inspiration for anything else, really. I mean, this is modded and not vanilla. Um, so, uh, yeah, basically, it, it's not vanilla, but it's still very much inspired by the style of vanilla. So, I mean, I just try to... Just tried to go with what felt authentic and right to me. So um, we'll wind down the video right here and just say that uh, I'm not going to ask you to do all that babble of sub uh, subscribe or like or anything like that. I'm not really planning on editing these videos. Um, pretty much just going to put them up as is and leave my stupid fumbling um, in it. Mainly because I have no real like ambitions on being a YouTuber or anything else like that. I just literally make these for fun um, and to show things off and how I want things done. So feel free to check out the stuff that I've told you before in the description, uh, the mod list and the playthrough guide. Um, and I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you and stop by again.